Hey, this is Nika Monford, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And welcome to the Snob Awards show, the show for Apple snobs, where we talk all things Apple and then some. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Snob Awards show. We definitely want to thank you for tuning in and rocking with us. Um, before we get into the show, definitely want to take a moment to do a quick shout out um, and thank each of you for your continued support of our show. Also, if you want to become a Patreon supporter where you get some exclusive content, um, you get uh, access to the show live and early, you can find out how to do all of that if you go on over to patreon.com slash snoboscast. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. We're going to kick it off with a lowdown where we talk all things Apple. All right. So we're going to kick it off with the announcement of the new iOS 18.1 beta. Now, typically we've talked about betas before. We haven't really talked about a lot in a while because it's really kind of running down features. This is a developer beta, so this is what the developers get to test out their apps on the new platform. But this one is a little bit special because we know that the cornerstone of Apple's new iOS 18 um, is surrounded by Apple intelligence, which is Apple's uh, take on AI. Well, by all accounts, when um, the new OS launches, usually with the new iPhone in September, you would think, hey, we're gonna get this new Apple intelligence, let's use it, I'm excited. Not so fast. It appears as if Apple intelligence will only be available in 18.1. Typically, Apple doesn't do a full beta, a full, you know, step up release within a new OS for at least a couple months. Um, but it likely will be that this um, Apple intelligence will um, roll out, this 18.1 version will likely roll out just a few weeks after the initial launch. And what's also unique about this 18.1 beta is that it's really like a beta within a beta because it's called, um, because once you get into the beta, it's only get, again available for Apple developers. In order to get Apple intelligence, you have to sign up for Apple intelligence inside the beta. So mm -hmm. you could be a developer, you could download the beta and you still cannot be one of the first ones to get access to this um, Apple intelligence feature, which again is basically the cornerstone of this latest release. And it's causing, I won't say any some confusion, but this is really kind of uncharted territory, especially on the developer build side of this, because typically you give the developers, you know, full access to what you have because the goal is to make sure that their apps are compatible with the new OS. And again, for iOS 18 and Apple intelligence, it only is going to work for iPhone 15 pro line and newer. So it'll be Apple iPhone 15 and potentially iPhone 16, which is what we're assuming the name of, of this beta is going to be. And, um, we can talk through some of the things that are gonna be in this, but before we do that, I did wanna get your thoughts on this kind of beta within a beta type of type of feature, I mean, type of sign up set up for, to get access to Apple intelligence. Well, my assumption is they wanna make sure they get it right because the questions of, is this secure? You know, where's my data going? Who's gonna be using the data um, as far as, how is Apple going to use it to create these, you know, these responses? I think they've got uh, Siri intelligence to create like little emojis, you know, who's going to, you know, where are they getting that data from to, you know, so I think a lot of questions out there is about data security, data privacy and fair use, you know, so Apple wants to make sure that they have all of that information or can at least answer those questions ahead of time. So they do want to make sure that they, this is in addition to iOS 18.1 beta, because they know that 
everybody that signs up to get the betas aren't developers and there's ways yeah. around it. You can just pay the hundred dollar fee or whatever the fee is. You can know somebody who can gift you one, all the different ways that you can get access to the developer beta, not mm -hmm. including the public beta beta, but the developer beta Apple knows all these people ain't developers. So it's like, yeah. all right, if you really want, you know, Apple intelligence, then you got to sign up and then quote unquote, join this wait list. And then mm -hmm. Apple has to decide, whether they're going to grant you access to utilize Apple intelligence. If you're going through all those hoops, of course, tech journalists are going to do it. And they're right. people are just going to do it anyway. Influencers, but, tech but, influencers. Yeah, right, right. But the people who really don't want to jump through those hoops won't do it. And m more importantly, the people who are willing to jump through those hoops may give it a harder test drive, which will mm -hmm. give Apple even more data to say, all right, we're on the right path or Here's some things we got to change up. Yeah. And I'm also wondering if this maybe has something to do with what could possibly be coming down the line with OpenAI, because again, in the announcement, they highlighted that ChatGPT was going to be basically like the third layer of, of using Apple intelligence. And, you know, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago that um, Apple was getting an observer seat on the OpenAI board, Microsoft already had an observer, um, seat on the board and after we talked about that the next week both of them dipped and was like yeah we're gonna roll out because we don't want to be linked to whatever lawsuits or issues that could potentially happen with open ai and i and was wondering quick, i was like i wonder if that has something to do uh i don't with, think so with that okay i don't think so because according to this story it says there are of course a number of apple intelligence features not launching on ios 18.1 today this includes Image Playground, which is the thing I talked about earlier to where they can, you can use Apple intelligence to create like a different images, Genmoji, priority notifications, and a more powerful Siri with on-screen awareness and chat GPT integration. So the chat GPT integration, all the security things, it seems like that Apple is quote unquote, could be concerned about aren't mm. launching in the 18.1 beta. So I don't know if that is to make sure people are not using it and then they already are on the hook for something when it's in the beta, mm. or they just want to let that stuff cook a little bit more before they uh, launch it. So gotcha. um, okay. yeah, Apple's like really keeping, They, my opinion is of course, since they pumped themselves up as we keep your data private and we are right. secure, you know, last thing yeah. they want to do is launch something in a beta that gets them in trouble. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, ah, yeah. we're going to pump the brakes on that and we're going to let yeah, that cook a little bit more. <laughs> For sure. Um, as far as the beta itself, so what's included in this 18.1 iOS and iPad OS writing tools where it says, uh, we're reading this article from nine to five Mac. Um, users can write proofread and summarize um, text nearly everywhere they write. Think of Grammarly. So basically you will have a built-in Grammarly. Um, some new Siri features are included in this. I'm trying to see if there's anything that uh, is uh, super exciting. Uh, glowing light that wraps around the edge of the screen when Siri's active. That could be new because right now, you know, you kind of get the little circle, uh -huh. like little waveform type thing that's at the bottom. Now it's going to be a full screen outline. Um, you can toggle between text and voice. Um, it gives support everywhere you go. Um, answers, thousands of questions um, about how to do something on the iPhone, iPad, Mac, pretty much what it already does now. And uh, it can follow along if users stumble over words and uh, maintain context from one request to the next. So if you're talking and you flub something or you miss say something, you can keep going and it'll pick it up and keep, uh, keep allowing you to have that request to Siri. Um, some mail features are included. Skimming through those. Um, I think we saw before it kind of like groups your like some of the emails together, mm -hmm. um, which includes like your most important emails that kind of group it together, put it at the very top. Um, you can access the inbox instead of previewing the first few lines, smart replies kind of gives you pre uh, fab responses to certain uh, text messages, uh, reduces interruptions, um, 
new a new looks like maybe a new focus mode a new focus uh ba -da -ba -ba -ba, for things that need your immediate attention so if you have a focus turned on it appears you can get a, an immediate attention that kind of pops through that um photos i know that you are huge on photos and i think when we did the announcement you talked about a couple of things through the with the photos feature that were um pretty interesting to you as well um, I'm not sure if any of those things that you were initially into are in this beta or not. Well, um, not specifically, but something that is interesting is memories, uh, with the new Apple photos. Well, the recent Apple photos, it'll automatically link pictures that were taken in a similar spot at a particular, at the same time, you know, uh, with the same faces, mm -hmm. Apple will automatically group those together and create a movie. Well, with this new 18.1, you can actually use, um, I don't, I keep wanting to call it, you can use text prompts or typing prompts. Like you can type mm -hmm. a description and Apple will pick the best memory photos and videos to make a memory for you. Right now, I don't think there's mm -hmm. no real way to make a movie, make a memory manually. So this may no, be I think they just go basically what based on like dates or whatever. Right, and right. sometimes in my memories, it's just like random photos put together. I'm like, how did you get this combination? Right. So with this feature in iOS 18.1, you can actually give it some more description and it'll actually create a memory movie out of that. Now, what would be dope is if I could then share that movie or mm -hmm. save it in my collections or something to that nature to where I don't lose it because if I go through all mm -hmm. that effort to you know type in descriptions type in a prompt and it give me this memory for the time that i'm actually using the photo albums mm -hmm. and it's kind of like well that's stupid so hopefully yeah. once you make the movie you can save it add it to a collection favorite it whatever the case may Do be some so other I, stuff with it yeah. so i go back to it you know if i want to yeah yep. all righty um next up it's been a lot of talk about obviously that big um beta update but there are some housekeeping things that also came out around the same time um mac os updates mm -hmm. um lots of them came out uh so across the three latest um mac os is that sonoma ventura and monterey more than a hundred security patches were fixed across these three OSs. For Sonoma, it was, what, uh, 54 updates. For Ventura, 36 updates. Uh, and for Monterey, 32 updates. So um, anytime you get a, an update, it's like, yeah, we always say it. Make sure you do your updates. Make sure you do your updates. But I think in particular, because we did get a little bit more information surrounding some of these um, security patches. And in this article from Macworld, there were a few that were highlighted that um, I think are of particular in interest because they are some pretty serious um, security vulnerabilities that are fixed. Um, for those who use family sharing, I know a lot of you have uh, multiple people um, in your plans and you share um, access with each other. So on the family sharing side, um, this is particularly for uh, Sonoma, the, the, the fix that they put in, it allows for an app to potentially be able to read sensitive location information. So if you're sharing your, your location in this whole family sharing app, this is multiple people, access known, if you go to a particular app, they could potentially get sensitive information about where your location is, where you've been, where you're going, um, those types of things. So that's a, a security, a huge security risk. Um, messages for Sonoma as well. An app may be able to view the whoever you're talking to or communicating with um, that the full phone number of that contact um, in the system logs. Um, photo storage. This one kind of like was like yikes. Because the whole point of having hidden photo albums, right, is you got something you want to hide and you don't want to have it, you know, easily accessible. If you're, you know, say, hey, look at these photos. You want to kind of stash some in the side. Well, um, there's a vulnerability that um, would potentially allow for these hidden photo albums to be viewed without authentication. Because if you know, 
you go over into your hidden folder, does your face ID or your passcode, mm, might not need it. Um, if you uh, don't have the security fix in, um, um, bypassing uh, privacy preferences, as well as another issue that an app may be able to use is also normal well, as well. Shortcuts, I know you use shortcuts a lot. Um, some um, apps may, may be able to obtain um, uh, sensitive data uh, for certain actions without prompting the user. So it just may offer up, say, hey, here's this data. You didn't ask for it, but we're gonna give it to you anyway. Um, so that fixes is included. And I think another one, um, WebKit. We hear WebKit a lot. WebKit is pretty much for your web browser, Safari. Um, so the, the vulnerability in this one is private browsing tabs may be accessed without authentication. So these are just a few of the more than 100 security patches that are included. And these are probably the most egregious uh, of them all, but it's one of those things where, again, you know, Terrence, you're in device management and you tell people all the time, make sure you update, update, update. But this one seems to me like it's, it has some meat to it. Yeah, based on your discrim uh, descriptions and what things that they patched, yeah, you probably need to go ahead and update that. You can set it to uh, update automatically, but just know that it won't update as soon as the update is available. It may take a day or two for that automatic update to actually download an update. And of course, mm -hmm. there's some specific, not specific, there are some requirements that you need in, in order for the automatic updates to take place. It's got to be on a charger. It's got to be above, I think, 50%. I think 50%. at least for your yeah, iPhone and Apple Watch, it's got to be above 50%. And it's got to be charging. And it's got to be connected to the network. So there are some people who fall asleep and don't plug their iPhones up or don't plug their Macs up or iPads, whatever the case may be. They're on them all night long and they're not, there's not enough of a downtime for the iPhone or Mac to say, oh, let's go ahead and push this automatic update because you're always on there clicking and clickety clicking in. Mm -hmm. So there's no quote unquote to downtime for uh, Apple to actually push it, even though you've got automatic updates turned on. So my suggestion would be just go ahead and manually update especially when there are security patches which, which seem very, very frequent now. But um, mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely just go ahead and do that. But in addition to that, there's a new iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, a couple of them that are coming out right now as well. iOS 17.6 and iPadOS 17.6, watchOS 10.6 and tvOS 17.6 all have updates available right now. So while iOS and iPad OS and all these, I call them handheld updates, don't have those same security patches. There are a couple of um, features that sneakily have went into um, these updates. Specifically, uh, iOS 17.6 has a feature called Catch Up to where if you are on the Apple TV's TV app and you go to watch a game, mm -hmm. instead of jumping right into the game, it'll show you like a small montage of highlights to kind of get you mm. caught up before you actually jump join the game live. So you, while you miss stuff, you don't, you didn't miss the important things. So Here's your recap. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I just thought Ooh. I'd highlight that. But yeah, in addition to Mac OS, there are some iOS updates available and watch OS and TV OS updates available too. Do your updates, people. All right, Um, this is a, a Bit of a quick little story, and I thought this was interesting or just kind of like for your knowledge. In addition to, um, you know, the beta that came out, you know, people, especially some of these Apple uh, tech um, journalists or tech influencers or enthusiasts, they always kind of have to go and dig a little bit deeper to see if there's something that they can find to maybe give them a leg up or give them a little bit of a clue into what's going on in the mind of the people that dream up the things over at Apple. So um, this user Aaron P613 on Twitter noticed that on the Mac uh, OS Sequoia 15.1 beta, 
it include numerous references to unreleased devices that will arrive later this year into early next year. So um, it doesn't really give you much information um, as it relates to the device itself, but it does give you some of the model identifier code. So based on, on what Aaron P613 found, you can basically allude to the fact that there's an iPhone 17 coming out, um, an iPhone 18, um, iPad 17, Mac 16, Mac 17, and there are different version numbers of these as well. And I think, uh, and according to this article, the different version, so it was like um, uh, iPad 17.1 or 17 comma one. So that's like, you know, this is, you know, a standard iPhone or this is the iPhone Pro or this is the iPhone Pro Max. Um, but I just thought it was just something um, kind of interesting to call out because people are always trying to dig a little bit deeper to see what's next, to see what's coming up the pipeline. And based on this, we can at least for the next maybe two to three years, kind of get an idea of what's coming down the pike um, from Apple when it comes to hardware. I mean, I guess <laughs> yeah. uh, it wasn't, I don't think it was that much of a, a leak or a new surprising information that Apple was going to come right. out with an iPhone 16 and maybe a 17 18, and maybe 18. an 18. Yeah. <laughs> That's their cash cow. You know, maybe there's something to glean from the number, from the amount. Like, for instance, you mentioned 17 1, 17 2, 17 3, and 17 4. You know, maybe that uh, adds up to the number of new devices that's going to come out like a total of four which again ain't really mm -hmm. surprising because you got the iphone you got the iphone plus you got the iphone pro you got the iphone pro max so there's four iphone 17.1234 that correlates to the brands or models for the iphone so it's kind of like eh, yeah. we kind of already knew that so you know but again i guess it's interesting to see how deep and how far people will go down that oh, rabbit hole go. in yeah. order to get some information gotcha. that is noteworthy, quote unquote, yeah. which again, in my opinion, not really all that no noteworthy, but you know, they are digging. So if I was Apple, I would purposely throw people off the scent. Petty. I would, <laughs> I mean, I would put so much random information into these things to where people would be confused and I would sit back and mm -hmm. giggle at all of the <laughs> posts that con all of the con articles and the stuff that was yeah. way off and and give people you know people who are quote unquote have historically been right on these things throw them for a loop so the much rumor loop. people right. yeah so much so that their fans start to question whether or not they're accurate or whatever oh i would, right. I would be having a field day that would be <laughs> apple needs to make a job and give me that job <laughs> to throw people off their scent when new products come out because I would, I mean, that would be the hardest I ever work in my life. Right. <laughs> to purposely have people scratching their head when they're digging through this stuff. <laughs> yeah, like what? Oh my God, I got the greatest, the the newest invention. And then it's like, wonk, 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 mm -hmm. when, you know, time comes out. So yeah. Um, the last story in the lowdown this week, we haven't really talked, um, Vision Pro in a while. And I saw this particular article and I was like, this is interesting. Um, brain implants. We've talked about them before with old Muskie, but um, this company um, called Synchron uh, announced Tuesday that they have developed a BCI brain computer interface that um, works with Vision Pro's uh, AR VR headset and is controlled by thought, not with eye movement, not with fingers, but with your brain directly. So there was a demonstration for this integration of this BCI, of Synchron's BCI um, and the Apple Pro. And the demonstration involved uh, a 64 year old man named Mark who has ALS, which is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And he currently doesn't have um, use of his hands and arms. But what he was able to do with this BCI chip 
which is tiny and it's implanted, doesn't do brain surgery, but it is implanted and it allows him to use the cursor and it allows him to watch Apple TV, send text messages, play solitaire, um, all with his mind, not with um, the typical, you know, pinch pinching uh, feature or moving your eyes around to control it. And um, the uh, Mark seems to be really impressed with it. Um, and again, I mentioned it, it's not done with um, actual brain surgery, like I think one of the other ones we talked about before, but it's implanted um, through a blood vessel. And it's kind of, I guess, snaked to the motor cortex of the brain via the jugular vein, which is, it says in this article, a minimally invasive endovascular um, mm -hmm. procedure. So this has a lot of use cases, right? Um, especially with people who may have uh, be paralyzed from like the neck down or have motor skill functions or in this particular case, um, a guy with ALS. And if it allows you to, you know, play solitaire, watch Apple TV, send text messages all by thinking them, I think this is to be, this sounds like a win. It sounds definitely like a step forward. It sounds like this company is being very mindful and thoughtful in the way that they're approaching this. Um, so yeah, I thought uh, yes. this was pretty interesting. Yeah, it's definitely a step in the right direction. Um, the this this company is being very considerate and very you know altruistic about what they're using this for mm -hmm. until the money comes <laughs> so oh. we shall see you know if you know well, I'm, I'm thinking movies right you know all mm -hmm. the movies start out with this person that has created this thing or discovered this thing and that's gonna help humanity. Yeah, but then it ends up being used or stolen or taken advantage of for military mm -hmm. operation, right? So I'm kind of mm -hmm. thinking along those lines to where, you know, <laughs> we talked about it in the pre-show to where America is not so hot when it comes to the Olympics as it relates to shooting, which you would mm -hmm. think Americans and our love for guns would make us top top tier. <laughs> Top, you know, we we win gold, silver, and bronze, and aluminum, and you know, metal and <laughs> copper. You know, all titanium, we getting it all, all the medals, right? So, you know, just being funny, but at the same time, you know, I could see, you know, having the military trying to use this to make hand-eye coordination faster, to give military uh, personnel real-time information from their thoughts and the ability to use their thoughts to control things like robots or surface air defense missiles or whatever the case may be. And I'm, I'm just spitballing here, but yeah. I definitely can see how this initially is used for people with disabilities, you know, to be able to feel like they have some sense of agency, you know, and autonomy, you know, when the, in all of the cases, they don't, you know, and then that yeah. growing into, you know, using it for all kind of things, which may or may not be morally or ethically what we were thinking of when we <laughs> first right. talked about this. Right. So the CEO and finder, Tom Oxley, um, he did mention that Apple is very supportive of this type of Vision Pro integration. And they talk a little bit more about what this could particularly mean specifically for people with disabilities. Um, it is saying it could lead to further integration of other adaptations uh, for folks with um, physical limitations, could be used um, in therapeutic and, and medical ways. Um, it could enhance communication for people who may not be able to speak. They'll be able to, and people who maybe use like um, input methods, like if you can type something and it like gives you kind of like the the uh, robotic type voice, this may could improve some of that. Um, educational opportunities for students in the classroom who have these disabilities, these physical disabilities, but mental capabilities are, you know, on point, but you know, the mind and the body doesn't wanna quite cooperate. This is, will likely allow students to feel more 
um, involved and proactive and included in their educational um, uh, endeavors. Um, professional applications. People working, there are people with physical disabilities and limitations who, again, like some students, mind is sharp, they can, you know, think and do, but their body just won't cooperate. This will likely help professionals who want to work, who can work, who have the education and the capability to work. But again, body and mind is not quite in place. This could help them as well. Of course, you got to throw in the entertainment and social aspects of it. I think this is probably where we get a little bit further away from the altruistic na uh, nature of this. Um, so yeah, there are potentially, you know, multiple different avenues that this could go. Um, and, you know, I want to try and stay positive mm -hmm. and kind of stay on the <laughs> altruistic um, uh, lane of this. But, you know, you know, back to being, you know, a realist. Um, I can definitely see um, where it could probably veer off really quickly and really easily when the money starts rolling in. But as of now, and the way this has been presented, um, it's minimally invasive to get it installed. Because I think the one that we talked about before, that actually had to cut open your skull or your brain or something like put it on your actual brain. This is like, you know, they just insert it, snake it through, connect it, and you're good. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think uh, into the right direction. Um, let's just hope that um, it stays there. You know, that stays there, and maybe there are some ethical um, communities or boards included to make sure that they do stay on the positive trend of 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 the nature of this work. That's going to wrap it up for the loadout. We're going to head on over into second string where we talk all other tech. So this um, particular thing has been trending on Twitter for the last maybe day or so. Um, wearable AI. You got the rabbit R1, mm -hmm. you got the AI pin. We saw how tragic, you know, those kind of up and kind of immediately came back down where well, there's a new wearable kid on the block and it's called Friend. And um, essentially this is, um, what's his name? Avi Scheifman. This is his take on how we can close the gap on loneliness. Um, we've talked about it before, um, a lot of people, especially um, men, we've talked about it before, you know, and people not having um, community and relationships to build with friends or socially, especially, you know, coming out of the pandemic, you know, people are really kind of siloed. This particular device called Friend is basically what it is. It's giving you a friend. Well, it's a wearable. How do you do it? How does it work? So it's a it's a wearable device that uh -huh. you put around your neck uh -huh. and you basically talk to it. And then what? The button and it's connect, it connects to your iPhone via Bluetooth and mm -hmm. it's always listening. So it's mm -hmm. always listening to your interactions, your surroundings. And if you press this button, mm -hmm. that's that because you wear it as a necklace around your neck, you press it and it allows you the person to speak to friend. And then friend is going to send you a message to your phone, almost like you're texting a friend and you're having a conversation with them. Additionally, this allows you to for a friend to give you a response without being prompted. It can just say, send your text message. And um, it for all of these little interactions, it's probably about the size of, uh, if you think of like a medallion around your neck, mm -hmm. it's probably, it's like an oval shape. Mm -hmm. Probably about the size of this, but it's more oval and it's weight. It does like a little light up thing, but um, yeah, um, the friend, which is the wearable itself and it's quote memories are stored 
on device or stored on the necklace. So nothing goes up to the cloud or to the mm -hmm. servers or anything. And the creator, as I mentioned, Avi, Avi Scheifman, he said that this device is a quote expression of how lonely quote he felt um, in an interview with The Verge. He said that friend was designed to be supportive validating and able to encourage ideas it's a it he says it's quote it's a great brainstorming buddy you can talk to you can talk to it about relationships and things like that so it's called friend so it's basically giving you a digital friend that you wear around your neck you can talk to it prompted and it can talk to you unprompted um pre-orders are available $99 and it's set to launch January, 2025. So, uh, want to get your thoughts on friend. I will say before we get in, into your thoughts, um, how I even first became aware of this, um, someone posted, I think they got like two and a half million dollars to start this up. They spent $1.8 million of that money on buying friend.com. so many other ways to spend money, I suppose. Um, I mean, I guess it's a good idea, but I guess the question is, is having something that you wear on your person enough of a di differentiator from all the other quote unquote chat bot AI friends that you don't have to buy nothing. All you do is download an app. You know, they you, we've seen them before to where we maybe even mentioned them to where a lot of these men out here, for whatever reason, feel super lonely. They can't uh, emotionally, educationally, connect. intelligently yeah. converse, connect with women. So they are going to these quote unquote AI girl, chatbot AI girlfriends, right? And they can mm -hmm. just type and type. And then the person kind of does all the things that you mentioned this friend thing does. So my question, again, like I mentioned, is how well enough does having a device another device that mm -hmm. you have to connect to you got to keep it charged i'm assuming uh, mm -hmm. i'm assuming you got to charge it it may not have to be charged every day so. like your phone but you got to charge it so it's another thing you have to tend to mm -hmm. versus an app that i can download and do the kind of the same things right i can give it access to my microphone so it can listen all day long you know, I can give it access to my text messages so I can kind of see how I talk, who I talk to, the conversations I have, all the things that friend can do. It's like, why mm -hmm. should I pay a hundred dollars for this thing when like right now I can download an app that kind of does the same thing? Is that enough of a di differentiator is my ultimate question. I guess it depends on how lonely you are. I think this thing may give the impression or the feel that you actually have someone with you because you're pressing it and you're just talking to it. You don't have mm -hmm. to type in anything. You're just talking to it because they have a video obviously. And it's a couple of different people using it. And I think mm -hmm. one of the, the girls is hiking and she's mm -hmm. talking about what she's seeing or whatever. And her phone is not out. Her phone is like in her backpack and it's almost like, Oh, I just got a text from my friend. Let me see what they're talking about. It, it, to me, it gives the illusion that you actually have a person that sends you messages and you talk to them, but you're not actually like on your phone texting or like, hey, blah, 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 or whatever. And it's not like some weird, funky, like the AI pen, which, you know, looked kind of weird and you had to clip it to you or the rabbit, which was orange. This is just like a little medallion around your neck. And I think what they are trying to do is give the illusion or give the person the feel. And if you're super lonely and this is, you know, if, if, if you're going to buy something like this, you're likely deep into the lonely sphere. And this kind of gives you, you know, people always say, my phone's dry. My phone's dry. Nobody's talking to me. My phone's dry. That type of thing. And maybe this 
because again, the girl in the video, she has her phone in her backpack and she touches her necklace and she says whatever she's saying. And then she kind of like her phone buzzes. She was like, oh. And then she opens the little flap on her shoulder, takes her phone out and she, uh, and then she, you know, types something back and goes on about her business. So I think the intent is to mimic that you have a person who you interact with um, and it gives you the sense that someone cares. Because I, what I find interesting is his last statement. This is from Mac Rumors. Uh, the article, it says, quote, you can talk to it about relationships, things like that. So it, to me, it gives a thing of, say you're one of these guys who is awkward and can't make friends. You tap the thing, you say, oh my God, this girl is so cute. She is da 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 da. And then you get a text from your friends that, oh man, I what is she wearing or whatever. So it kind of gives you the idea that you have somebody that you talk to and they talk, yeah, you I, talk to them and they talk to you. Yeah, I get it. But I guess a true friend, uh, isn't necessarily always validating and affirming and um, uh, understanding. And mm -hmm. yeah, friends are those things, but they're also, yeah. those are the people that you go to to tell you the truth. So now yeah. if I had this friend thing and I was selling it or I was a developer and I was pitching this thing, I'm like, this is a real friend. So if I'm out hiking, <laughs> And I press the button. It's like, oh, the weather's real nice or whatever the case may be. My friend would be like, <laughs> now, you know, you're allergic to grass. <laughs> you probably need to go back in the house because now you're going to be in the house and going to be com com complaining to me that your <laughs> nose is runny and your eyes is itchy. So my yeah. suggestion would be either A, make sure you took your allergy medicine and go back in the house. <laughs> right. Because that's a real friend. A real friend right. is going to tell you what time it is. Right. <laughs> this thing, the chat AI bot things that I mentioned all are kind of like less of a friend and more of a stroke your ego, right? Yeah. Because if you and that's say, probably oh, what some know, of these guys need because they don't well, have well, that. Well, just people in general, I'm I'm noticing that they are having a tough time finding friends because they are really looking for somebody to affirm them. Everything, yeah. You know everything, like you said, everything they're their thoughts, what they're their wearing, emotions, what they're wearing, yeah. what they're into, you know, yeah. a true friend is be like, uh, yeah, you about to go to that concert. All right. Well, let me know how it goes. Cause I ain't going, you know I'm what I'm going. <laughs> right. Right. You know, you're looking up yeah. a true friend is going yeah. to be a true friend. This is yeah. less of a friend, more of a coping mechanism yeah. for the lack of friends that you actually yeah. have. And there's an answer for that. It's therapy. And it'll yeah. probably cost you about a hundred dollars. A session, which is about yeah. how much this thing costs, you know, but you actually work on yourself yeah. <laughs> to then be able to go find friends. Now, again, I know it's not that easy. I yeah. don't want to give the impression that I know the answer to people who are suffering from depression or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to give you the impression that I, I, I know the answer. But right. at the same time, the way this thing operates is more of a affirming thing which I guess people need that, but you also need that, you know, real companionship, yeah. whether they are, you know, think like you, talk like you or not. Yeah. And I think what this could potentially do is dig people into a deeper hole, into more isolation because it gives the appearance that they have someone mm -hmm. and it doesn't allow them to say, hey, you know, or encourage them to go out and try and meet people or try new things or go to therapy. Because why don't you do that when I got a bestie who's going to agree with everything that I do and is going to co-sign right. and, you know, uh, love all the things that I love. So right. it's, it's but, interesting. But it does show that, that there are people out there who domain hoard for this reason, mm -hmm. because imagine if you bought friend.com for $8 a month to keep the domain active and then here come this joker 
that's going to give you $1.8 million just to use friend.com. So if this this story didn't give you any new ideas, (laughs) one idea it should give you is if you've got a cool, if you come up with a cool name, and it's available as a website. Go ahead and buy, buy spend it. that money and buy that. <laughs> spend that eight dollars a month uh, to to keep it active. All right, um, let's head on over to for the culture where we talk all things social, entertainment, communal, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so on yesterday, which was Monday, um, around. Or was it Sunday? It was a Sunday or Monday around 9 p.m. Eastern time. A um, tweet went out um, saying, hey, President Trump, former President Trump. I think they called him President Trump. They probably did. Um, is no, it says former. Um, NABJ hosts a conversation with former President Donald J. J. Trump. If you don't know what NABJ is, NABJ is the National Association of Black Journalists. They have this conference every year. I have a really good friend who's in journalism, um, spending a long time as a part of NABJ. I have some acquaintances that are in NABJ as well, and they always talk about it's like a big family reunion. They go back, they have a good time. Um, you know, a couple people was like, you should probably come because technically you're in media because you have a podcast. And I was like, oh, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, this is a uh, almost 50 year um, organization dedicated to the uplifting, the um, empowerment of black journalists all around the country. So when this was announced that on either Sunday or Monday evening, that this would happen on Wednesday at noon, um, people are in an uproar. It's like, one, this guy don't like black people. (laughs) Two, this guy don't like the press. Um, Why are y'all welcoming him? And then it's the fact that it was, it's moderated by three black women journalists. One being Harris Faulkner, who is a Fox News correspondent, we'll call her. I won't call a journalist, I'll say correspondent. Well, the internet is exploding. People are talking, oh my God, oh my God, this is the worst. Why are they platforming uh, a known racist, convicted criminal, all these things. Then you have other journalists coming about, well, this is our, this is the job. You know, we have to ask the tough questions. We wanna talk to all of the candidates. And it was like, well, we always invite the candidates to NABJ to speak and have a conversation with us. People were still like, I don't think you should do it. This is not going to work well. So it was all this discourse, all this discourse. People were, you know, firing shots back and forth. One of the people who said she volunteered this information, said she was one of the ones who made the call. They go and she's very um, passive aggressive and a little bit antagonistic to people who are asking questions about how this come about. Because again, they found out about this less than 48 hours before it was supposed to happen. People are already mm-hmm. bought tickets to the conference, hotels, cause it's in Chicago, um, plane tickets. And her mm-hmm. response to people when someone said, what if people don't want to see this? She was like, well, they can just not come. And so that was a whole nother thing. So all this is going on, all this is going on. People are asking questions, how this come about? who co-signed on this. There were co-chairs who said they had no idea that this was even happening. No one um, informed me. I think one of the co-chairs stepped back. There were a lot of people who were scheduled to speak. They canceled their panels. And it's all of this commotion. Well, the event happened today um, at noon Eastern Standard Time. So it has Mm -hmm. these three um, journalists who were doing this panel, Mm -hmm. they were like, the the president of NABJ was like, we're gonna do live fact checking, because people like, this guy is just gonna use this as a way to spew his lies and denigrate black women, denigrate journalists. This is not going to be good for you. This is not going to be you being the organization. It's not gonna be good for us, us being the black journalists. 
and the community at large to platform this guy. No, 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 no. We are doing all these things. We're going to make it happen. This is going to be great. This is what we want, right? If you're a journalist, you're supposed to be unbiased. But again, this conference, from what I gather from the people that I talk to about it, is that it's like a family reunion. It's a place to kind of let your hair down a little bit because journalism is already hard. It's already hard to be a black journalist. It's not that many slots available. So it's more of kind of like, let's kind of recharge ourselves before we go back into our different things. Well, the event happened today. Um, the former guy was almost an hour and a half late for the event. Um, it also came out that um, Harris Faulkner, the Fox commentator, one of the mm -hmm. contingents for him to speak was to have her on the panel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what has also come out of this is that the former guy was invited every year leading up to his um, campaigning, all the way through his ad, um, administration and into his second um, time running for this. Never came, never went. And he said the stipulations were, it had to be all black women. It had to include the Fox person. And what the streets are saying is that the reason for the delay was not because he was late, but because there was an argument, because one of the things that the NABG president said was we're going to live check him because that's one of the things that people talked about. Who's going to hold him accountable for the lies that he undoubtedly tells because that's what he does. And like, no, we're going to have a live ticker that's going to live check, uh, live fact check him with PolitiFax, you know, real time. So you can see those things and he wouldn't come go on because he said, no, if it's live fact checking, he won't come on. Mm -hmm. So they were at a standstill. So they finally nixed the fact checking mm -hmm. and he comes out and out the gate, um, one of the reporters, I think her name is Rachel Scott from ABC. She's teeing up her question. So she's running down these things, you know, we're going to, she said, we're going to, you know, you know, talk about the elephant in the room. You hear talking to these black people, you know, you've said, you know, this about this black, black person, that about this, you know, group of people, what makes you want, what would make black people want to vote for you? And he kicks mm -hmm. off and said, well, that was a very rude question. And basically, you know, going to the, that was nasty. And he was basically antagonistic to her the whole time, antagonistic mm -hmm. to the other black woman. But Whenever he got kind of like in a jam, the Fox News person who was kind of like his safety blanket, she would come in and give him a softball question. Mm -hmm. So it was originally supposed to be an hour long interview. Mm -hmm. They pulled him about 34 minutes, about 30 minutes into the event. Mm -hmm. So I titled the section NABJ a bridge too far. With all that kind of background, I did include an article um, from the griot that kind of gave the background up to the point of the actual um, event um, to kind of give the background. But I guess I want to get your thoughts on when it comes to elections, when it comes to, I want to say elections, when it comes to this particular candidate um, from the birtherism with President Obama up through his own um, election. Are we, we pejoratively, meaning, you know, the black community, in this case, specifically black journalists, are we too open with allowing people who would cause us harm? And again, this is in Chicago, and he said some really bad things about the city of Chicago. Um, are we too accommodating and welcoming people who cause us or mean us no good or have shown or proven that they don't mean us any good or because these are journalists, they are required or they should allow someone like him to come in and have these conversations. Well, 
nobody's obligated to do anything. That goes for journalists, that goes for politicians, that goes for people to church, that goes for whomever. You're not obligated to do anything. Um, if you claim you are a true journalist, you will put the offer out there. You know, you, you're you inviting both of the presidents on a regular basis. You know, keep it consistent, right? I think the problem with this particular case is it's a multitude of things. The first problem was the fact that they couldn't get Vice President Kamala Harris to speak there because in the beginning, they were floating the idea of doing a virtual thing. Mm -hmm. And Kamala Harris and her team, you know, um, they th th there was a lot of confusion as to whether right. or not so, they were going to get yeah, Kamala so Harris there. So yeah, so she at, said that she couldn't come. She said we can do something virtually. And then they right? said no. They said no. But then yeah. when she became president or the presumptive nominee for the Democratic uh, presidential nomination, that story changed to can you please come? Can you please come? We'll do the virtual thing. We'll do the virtual thing. You can send a representative. You can send hell. We don't care. You can send um, uh, Megan Thee Stallion for all we care. You know, we mm. just need somebody from your people, representative, somebody to come down. After and all the backlash. Yeah. Right. And they were like, nah. And Kamala Harris's team are like, nah, we've moved on. So I think you said no. As so a result we of, had to keep going. As, as a result of that falling through, then they had to go full bore on getting president. Uh, former President Donald Trump there because they have to, have, not they, but comp conferences, big events, they have to have this big tent pole event. And I'm assuming the conversations, if they would have worked out between Kamala Harris, would have been that tent pole thing. Um, since Trump is really trying to now appeal to black people, he probably agreed to come to the event and probably took them by surprise because what you've mentioned is every year that they've invited him previous up to now, he's declined it. Well, this year <laughs> he agreed. So now they're like, Oh shit, what do we do? Right. <laughs> so, and I'm pretty sure they would have um, either had more leverage if Kamala Harris, uh, vice president Kamala Harris would have been there to use that as leverage against Donald Trump. Well, since she wasn't going to be there, Donald Trump was like, all right, I'll come, but this and this and this and this and this has got to happen. Mm -hmm. And that put the NABJ in a weird position to where they kind of like, all right, we got to do something. We just can't have nobody. Right. So they're mm -hmm. like, all right, well, let's bring Trump on. And but we're going to have these stipulations and it's up to Trump and to be like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. But they so he had his own um, requirements and NABJ they had to do something. So they was like, all right, well, we will. Did they have to? Well, well, they had to in the sense that they claim to be by unbiased. They claim to be um, true journalists, right? So mm -hmm. the ability to bring somebody like Donald Trump to their own people, which in previous history, he is pretty much rolled with his own crowd. So mm -hmm. they maybe they figured, okay, this is a win. Because we can get him into, quote unquote, enemy territory. Mm -hmm. And we can grill him, we can grill him, we can grill him. But of course, with Donald Trump, you know what time it is with Donald you Trump. You know what time he's it is. Not, he's not going to play the game the way you think he should play it. That goes for Republicans, that goes for Democrats, that goes for yeah. businesses, anybody. that goes for anybody. Donald Trump is going to play the game that he wants to play. And you either get on board or you or get off. Randall. Or get and, that's and, and that's what happened. And that's what unfortunately and, happened to a and, lot of and, these. Go and, ahead. And ABJ, they got ran over. Steve so now rolled. they look bad, right? Because now Real they look bad. bad because now the black people's like, man, what are you doing? Right. Which, right. Which going back to your original point is, you know, I mentioned that, you know, you're not obligated to do anything. You know, the fact that Donald Trump has been so disparaging specifically to Black, black women, women. journalists yeah. that are all members of the NABJ and, and like all April who won Ryan, um, and they Hill. all won yeah, and all these people yeah, that he uh, Yamanish Al Cinder I think they all were previous NABJ right so he women disparaged or reporters of the year yeah so for the fact that he like directly disparages the NABJ and then for the nerve for them to turn back around and say please 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 you know, for lack of a better term, it's just like, 
now black folks is like, yeah, we, mm, yeah, we don't know if we messing with y'all like that. You know, they've got turmoil within the ranks. You mentioned some mm-hmm. lady uh, left her post because of all this was going down. People so it's just like, talks. Yeah. was it worth it? Because it it's like, not. this is not new with Donald Trump. You have you to know ask what you're yourself, getting. you yeah. have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Is yeah. it worth it? And in most cases, especially yeah. with our demographic, it ain't worth it. It's not it worth it. You are not so going to win. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't going to so win either know. way with this. You are right. always going to be losing. And I saw somewhere that they were saying that um, Fox News was a um, a sponsor of some sort. So there was money exchanged you can add that um, for this. So uh, you can also add to the fact that um, I think they were saying something along the lines of... Um, I can't remember what they were saying. I don't want to uh, say any rumors or anything like that. But yeah, this was this was a problem from the. They word were never going to win. And they, they were never they, going to win. And they tried to save it as much as they could, but it they fell on their face. So now they know. You know, you got to learn, and the only way you're going to learn is go through the process. They thought they could control right. the situation, did not work. So now they know. I don't know when they're going to learn that this guy is who he is. And I think the the president was like, yeah, this is our chance to find out his side or whatever. And I'm like, you've known his side from the beginning. It hasn't changed. It's not going to change. You are going to, even if you thought you could get him on stage and control him and got you, you lost as soon as you agreed to this. As soon as you agreed to this, there was no coming back for you. And I... Honestly, I don't feel bad for the organization or the leadership because they brought this on themselves. Who I do feel bad for are the members who did not want this, who pushed back against this and were not listened to by their leadership. So I will, it'll be interesting to see if people keep their memberships, keep paying their dues, if they come. And again, this is the first day of the conference. So they got the rest of the week up through, I think the fourth to, to be there and do this. I think NABJ is like you mentioned, they are family. Uh, I don't know about the leadership, but I'm assuming the members who go on a regular basis, they consider themselves family. Like you mentioned at the top, NABJ is a a time for them to kind of kick it with old friends they haven't seen for the past year and get to hang out and get to talk about some stuff at the same time. Right. Um, I don't think that's going to stop. I'm pretty sure this just gave the leadership at NABJ a black eye, something that it will take them a while to recover from. It's now, it eventually going. it will because the, the the presidential election season will change subjects. You know, surprisingly, nobody's talking about Israel and Palestine anymore because we've changed the channel. You know, yeah. so this they'll, we'll change the channel off of this too. But for the meantime, in between time, you know, NABJ the they've got this black loud. eye. Right. Yeah. And, you know, um, going forward, there, there probably will be a shakeup at the at the top. And in the end, in this time next year, it'll, it'll be back to business. <laughs> yeah, I probably think the whole leadership is probably going to get le boot uh, after this because this was bad. All right. Um, that's going to wrap up for the culture. Let's head on over to the hookup. I'm looking at the wrong camera. Let's head on over to the hookup for the tech tip of the week. Uh, This is not a big one, but uh, we've known for years that certain states have been able to add their digital driver, not make their driver's licenses digital via the Apple Wallet app. Uh, Ohio, you are the latest state that enables you to add your driver's license to the Apple Wallet. So that's my hookup for the week. If you're from the state of Ohio and you have a driver's license, I would hope. And you have an iPhone, you can quickly add your digital ID to your Apple wallet. Now, I've had my Georgia ID on my Apple wallet for the past year and a half. Mm -hmm. Haven't used it one time. (laughs) I don't know if that's because technology at places who would accept it hasn't caught up. I don't know what it is, but, you know, uh, I guess it's a good thing to have if I got my phone and I need to identify myself and it's available, you can do it. I guess it's better to have and not need the need and not have. Prepared, yeah. (laughs) I guess, but uh, (laughs) practicality speaking, (laughs) I haven't used it at all. But if you're one of those people has been waiting to do that, and you're from Ohio, you can do that now. Nice, Ohioans, you got a driver's license in your wallet. Use it wisely. 
that's going to wrap up the show for this week. Brother Tech, where can the people find you? Sure. You can find me all over the internet at Brother Tech. That's B-R-O-T-H-A-T-E-C-H. And you can find me at Tech Savvy Diva everywhere. Again, to connect, to comment, to share, to support our show, head on over to snobblewest.com to get all of the details. And that's going to wrap it up. We will see you guys next week. Peace. Bye, everybody. <laughs>